back for part two of the rotisserie build. Um, this video is pretty long, but please stick around to the end so you can see how well the rotisserie turns out because we do get it built this episode. It's time to start on the mounts on the car so we can attach to the rotisserie. Um, I tried using the scrap steel that I have, but after looking at it and getting it cut, it, it's just way too thin wall. Um, I don't want to put this car up in the air, upside down, me under it, with that steel. I didn't feel comfortable. So I ended up running down to the uh, local place that sells steel, bought some of this 2x4 square, uh, rectangle tube, 8th uh, inch wall, and we're going to use that. That set me back 168 bucks, um, which, which isn't bad really. I'll be in this for maybe 300 bucks total. That's cheap for a rotisserie. Um, so my first plan here is to do the bar on the back. Uh, I put the rear bumper shocks back in place. We're going to mount that rectangle steel right to here, right across, and then build off of that with the pivot point somewhere right around here. Um, and then we can, when we get it up in the air, we can attach it to the uh, rotisserie just like that. So we'll get started with that. inch bolts for this to mount to the rear bumper shocks and unfortunately I forgot that I had broken my half inch bit so my 1560 wasn't quite big enough. I'm going to use my die grinder to open the holes up a little bit. We got two of the holes drilled. I just want to set this up there and confirm that my measurements were correct and mark my other holes before we drill everything. That way, in case I was off a little bit, I don't waste my time. <clears throat> Obviously, I got to drill all the way through, but again, I just wanted to confirm fitment first. And everything, those ones line up, and I'll just use my marks I got here to take some measurements, confirm my measurement between my bolt holes, and then we'll transfer it to the other side and get those drilled. We got that all mounted up. Um, as you can see, you got two bolts on each side. It's got to be plenty strong enough. As long as those shocks are as strong as I think they should be, we should be all set.
Should be plenty strong enough. Next thing we gotta do is build an upright right here and then attach our pivot tube to it. My goal is to make my pivot tube approximately halfway between the bottom of the frame rails and the top of the roof. Real quick, rough measurements, it's approximately four feet. So this should be right here. This is an 11 inch piece from here to here. With the, the, tube, the three inch tube on here, that should put me right about at midpoint. So I'm, I'm gonna tack everything in place for now check my measurements, and then we will pull it, this back off and fully weld everything on the bench. There it is, finished welded up. I'm gonna add some gussets, uh, probably some more of that small square stock from you know down here to 45. I'll probably cap this off too, just because right now it, the weight of the car is only gonna be pulling on just this edge. So if I if I put a plate across here, it'll be pulling on everything all the way around. I can't really, you know put a gusset here because obviously this is going to be sliding inside the other tube. Um, I wish there was a way to do something, but those welds should be plenty strong enough. I got plenty of penetration. Um, but yeah, we'll just, we'll just add some, some gussets to strengthen this up and then this piece will be all done and we can bolt it back on the car and then start on the front. And this is what happens when you forget to clean the rust off the metal. Now I get to grind that back down and re-weld it. There we go, we got it all done. That should be plenty strong enough for what we need it for. Uh, at some point, Probably once I get it up in the air, I'm gonna mount something on here so that I can pin the car at certain angles and doesn't try to rotate on me. Uh, but that's easy enough to do later. Uh, but I did just discover one issue. I really should not have put that bracing on right here until I had this piece made. I was afraid of this when I was making it, um, and it, it doesn't disappear. So I wouldn't be able to rotate the car around 360 degrees. Kind of defeats the purpose of having a rotisserie. So I'm going to cut this piece off, weld something on maybe from down further down back here, up to here, just to give it, you know, keep some bracing in there, but keep it out of the way of hitting this when it rotates around. All right, got the rear done, it's time to move on to the front mount. My plan right now is to come off the frame right here on both sides and put this, this beam right across, right like this, and then we'll build up and, and put the tube on like we did on the other side. Um, so we got to cut a piece for each side, be 11 inches I think I just measured, 
mark our holes, drill it, mount those on, and then we can tack everything in place. This edge to be vertical, so I'm going to use my level to get that line just where we want it. There's our mount, now we'll just do it a second time for the other side. Now we're going to make our upright to attach to here so we can mount the tube up here to, for the pivot. Uh, so I need this 31 and a half inches uh, at the top to match the other side. And we're at 21 and a half right to the top of here. So we need to make our uh, cut our tube at 10 inches. There you go, she's all mocked up, tacked together, so I'm going to pull it back apart now, fully weld everything, add our gussets and strengthening pieces like we did on the, the back, and we'll pop it back on and we should be all set to go. All right, we've got that piece all fully welded. I'm just gonna add in some strengthening pieces like we did to the other, other side. I'm gonna cap this off. Gonna add my braces right here. And I think I might 
plate this across the joint here on the front and the back just to give it a little more strength because all the force right here is going to be pulling on this joint you know pulling it this way with the weight of the car so i believe we'll do that i might plate over here too both sides just because again that's where most of the force is going to be pulling and i will probably do the same thing to the mount on the other side you know the this plate right here uh, just for some extra strength check this out got them all done the front mount um, i added a whole bunch of gussets too uh, like i mentioned before got them all fully welded in all the way around that should be plenty strong enough i don't know how i could possibly make this any stronger than it is uh, the rear housing I took back off and added plates to also uh, on the vertical piece just like I did on the other one and I plated the ends here uh, because this was obviously an, an open end of the rectangle tubing um, so I just welded on a piece of angle scrap stuff that I found laying around um, just to give it a little bit of extra strength. Um, I believe also when I go to put the front one back in, I'm probably going to tack it in a couple places around here just to give it a little bit of extra hold instead of just relying on the bolts. Um, but all we got to do now is pop them back in and should be all set to put the car up on the rotisserie and try it out. Alright, don't make the same mistake I did. I forgot to account for warpage when I built this. These two arms here have pulled out a decent amount, more than I expected. Um, probably when I welded this, nah, prob probably the initial weld, just from all the heat. What I should have done is put a couple washers or a plate or something in between the, the car and this um, piece of rectangle tubing. That way I would have had enough to, you know, enough to account for that deflection. The only way I could get this together without cutting that all back apart is I wrapped my strap around that, pulled it just as tight as I could, and it got close enough that I could start tapping it in. Um, would have been a lot easier, though, to, to not build it quite so tight to begin with. Uh, but we'll get it in place, and it's not going to hurt anything at this point. But if, you, you know, if I had built that just a little bit narrower, this would be a ton easier. You know, even if it had warped this way, you know, towards the middle... My bolts, when I stuck them through, would suck that right back out, and it would be a ton easier than beating this thing back in place now. And I am going to weld this a little bit, you know, not a ton, just a couple beads um, between these arms and the frame, just so that all of the weight isn't on four bolts. There we go, we're done. Got everything built. Um, next step is just to put it up on the uprights. Um, I got some help coming in the morning. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how we're gonna get this up in the air. I'm thinking using an engine hoist on one side and my tractor on the other. Uh, I don't know, seems kind of sketchy. Um, we'll see, I'll come up with a plan in the morning. We might be able to do one side at a time the only thing I got left to do is cut a couple pieces of steel to go from here to the other side so once I get it up in the air I can weld those on both sides so that these pieces don't try to kick out when you put the weight on it. Um, other than that though, the fabrication of the um, rotisserie is all done. Alright, we're ready to put the Datsun up on the rotisserie and see how it works. Uh, the only thing I got to do still is get the suspension off the front and rear. I'm going to have that in a separate video though. Uh, it's not really part of building a rotisserie. Um, so we'll get that done and then I got some help coming to get the car up in the air and on the rotisserie. Hopefully it goes well. I, I got a plan. My plan right now is to um, put my engine hoist in through here, chain down through the shifter hole. I got this tubing that's going to go crosswise underneath the frame rails and I'm hoping that that will be balanced enough front to rear with a couple people helping that we can pick the car up that way. Supposedly these only weigh five, six hundred pounds uh, as a bare shell so 
it really should not be much effort at all to get that up on. Uh, but who knows? We'll see. But I got to get that suspension and everything off. Um, like I said, that's going to be in another video. And uh, then we'll jump right on getting this thing up in the air. All right, we got to change the plans. My dad came up with a good idea. Um, with it just up on the quick jacks, we're only about six inches away from being able to connect it. So we blocked it up a bunch. And we should have plenty of height now that we can just lift it up with the quick jacks and slide the uprights in place. super happy with how this has turned out we can rotate the car it slides rolls around on the ground easy um, only things I want to do now I'm a, I'm a bit worried about since it's so high um, and I don't have these legs as wide as I wish they were so what I'm gonna do is just take some steel make a little leg to come out here with a little pad on it that sits half inch ish off the ground that way if it did decide to it wanted to tip it'll hit that pad and stop um, I need to connect from here to the other side that way these uprights stay square you know level with the floor or perpendicular to the floor um, that way it, you know it doesn't start binding up or something when I try to rotate it um, and I mentioned it before, before we actually put it up on here. I'm going to make some sort of mechanism to lock this in place when I have it, you know, spun around. Either just pin it down through here. Maybe I'll drill through here and 
weld the nut and that way I can just tighten a bolt down to lock it in place. Uh, not 100% sure on that, but going to get started, get those legs made. That way I don't have to worry about it tipping at all. All right, this is what I came up with. Just uh, an arm coming off each side, uh, just in case it starts to tip. That way it'll catch itself. It's not touching the ground. Um, you know, it's not touching the ground. That way it's not dragging and making it harder to roll. Uh, it is a bit tougher to roll over than I was hoping. I don't know, I must have got my measurements wrong. It, it's clearly more bottom heavy, which makes sense. There's, there's more structure on the bottom. So I, I could have built this a little bit further down, a little shorter. It probably would have been a little easier to roll over. Um, you know, just by myself, um, it's not real easy to roll over just pulling on the car. So I temporarily just welded this bar on here just so I got some more leverage. It, it's doable, but it is a little tougher than I was hoping. But it's not like I'm going to be, you know, constantly flipping it over and upside down and, and all around. You know, I'll, I'll get it in a spot and lock it down, which I still have to do. I haven't done that yet. Um, but the main structure of everything is done. Uh, oh, I, I added that crossbar connecting the two sides just so they, you know, can't move in and out. Uh, lock, you know, lock it right in place. So, going to attempt to flip it all the way over for the first time. Okay, we're going to attempt to roll it up on its side. It doesn't roll too bad, but it actually wants to come back down level. Um, so I'm going to need to build something to lock it in place. Um, but wow, that frame was terrible. But this will make it a ton easier to work on it underneath instead of trying to do it laying on the back on the floor. <laughs> Wow, super successful first test. I'm really happy with how it's turned out and it's really not as hard as I thought it would be to roll it over. I did have the wife helping me. Um, if you noticed when I was rolling it over, it probably looked like I was struggling quite a bit, but that's just because I was really trying to make sure for that first test that it didn't just flip right over real quick on its own and you know cause some damage, break something. You know, who knows what could happen. Um, but I gotta figure out a way to or I gotta create, fabricate a way to lock it in place, which I don't think it'll be very hard. Um, and I'd like to figure out a way that I could easily flip it from one of the ends myself and lock it down. Um, just because, you know, it's not too bad rolling it over from right here on the, the car, but I can't do that and lock it down on the end. And I'm not gonna have it just sitting up in the air and try to hopefully it stays in place while I run around to the end. Um, maybe I do something similar to this, um, you know, put a, put the bar through here so that it can be removed and it doesn't stick out the whole time. Um, that way, you know, I could, if I got it long enough, you know, have it out here, that way I could roll it right around and lock it from back here or up front, either way. Um, either way, I don't know, I'll figure something out, but for now, this will work. I can roll the car over. I can do all my work standing up instead of laying down underneath the car, trying to cut out and weld, and it's just going to be so much better, and so much of a better finished product. You know, when you're laying on your back on the floor on a creeper with the car inches from your face, you're probably not going to do as good of a quality of work as you will when the work is a lot easier to do. Um, so just this those quality of life things um, should help me get this done even better. Um, but for having never used a car rotisserie, I've never, I've never seen anybody use one. I've never seen one in person, um, just, you know, online, um, and coming up with this myself, I'm incredibly happy with how this has turned out. Um, but now that we got this done, 
finish those few last touch-up items um, and then we can actually start getting rid of all of this rusty metal but thanks for watching um, any questions or anything or any ideas for making this easier for me to operate myself I'd love to hear it um, thanks for watching